Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Rando Geek. So we have some updates regarding AT&T. It looks like AT&T and Duke Energy have buried the hatchet and settled their FCC poll rate row before the Fourth Circuit. They're saying with oral arguments before a three-judge appeals court for the Fourth Circle to begin on January 24th of 2024, Duke Energy and AT&T have agreed to settle their disagreements against the FCC over a poll rate decision that we're both concerned about for different reasons. They're saying on November 18th of 2022, in a unanimous vote, the FCC stood by its 2021 decision regarding utility poll attachment rates in a dispute between AT&T and Duke Energy Progress, denying Duke Energy's bid to revisit a rule that slashed the rates that AT&T pays to attach equipment to its utility poles. However, Duke Energy sought judicial review by filing a petition for review 10 days later. AT&T also sought review, and both petitions were consolidated. After both companies resolved their differences, the court dismissed the appeals on January 8th of 2024. They're saying that the FCC did not oppose their motion. Following the November 18th, 2022 vote, FCC Chairwoman Jessica Rosenworcel applauded the FCC's resolution of the joint use agreement decision, stating, The details are complicated, but the message is simple. The Federal Communications Commission stands ready to do what it can to provide certainty so that disputes like these are resolved, polls are accessed, and high-speed networks are built. The settlement signifies a resolution to a contentious issue that had the potential to impact poll uh, poll attachment rates and the deployment of telecommunications infrastructure. However, the precise terms and conditions of the settlement remain undisclosed, they're saying, which, of course, leaves some aspects of the resolution open to interpretation. Now, if we look at the article here, which I'll leave the link for you down below in the description, you can see the actual uh, court case here, and we can see the uh, petition petition for review, some of what was going on. Duke Energy was a party to the preceding underlying order. Uh, There's some mention, some other cool stuff here. So this is in the link. You guys can check it out if you're interested. This is basically everything that they're claiming, the entire court case here, uh, what's what's going on. There was some interesting stuff here. I did take a quick look at it before. Uh, I mentioned something about the rates and then the uh, distance that AT&T is allowed to attach on a pole. They're accusing at and Duke Energy is accusing AT&T of using too much of the pole. Uh, so there, there's a gr- disagreement with that, as well as the actual rates. Uh, somewhere in the article, it says that, um, you know, AT&T and Duke agreed that AT&T would, uh, you know, would charge the old telecom rates. And so there's big disagreement with that. Um, but it does look like they resolved it, according to the article. Like I said, this will be down below in a description for you in that article, so you can check it out on your own. But uh, it is good to see that it was resolved because most importantly here is we want these towers built. We want the networks built out. You know, the community shouldn't suffer because of a disagreement. These two companies need to grow up and work on a fair price that's beneficial for both sides. You know, bickering about these things is hurting the community, not just the individuals that live there, but it hurts them financially because tourists are not going to want to come to these cities and towns if they can't get connected to the internet. There's a lot of AT&T, you know, wireless, you know, consumers that have AT&T as their primary network. And if you don't have good service there, you know, they're not really going to want to stay there for very long. There's a lot of people that work during their vacation, you know, work remote. Maybe they're at high positions and they have to always be on call. They need access to the internet. You know, they want to use their phones. Maybe it's a work phone or work laptop. So, You know, good to see that it was resolved. Like I said, members of the community, the town itself financially shouldn't be at burden because these two can't work on an agreement of a fair price. So good news for AT&T and Duke working it out, getting the networks built. That's what they're supposed to be doing. So as always, thank you guys so much for stopping by and watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.